Hey guys, welcome to another FCPO DIY. My name is Mike Hidalgo, and today we're going to show you how to do the rear brakes on a 2007 Mercedes Benz C280, also known as a W203. Now, for the parts we're going to be using, the kit that we have put together consists of Zimmerman rotors, TRW ceramic pads, and a BOA OE wear sensor. On some models, you'll see two sensors on the front and the rear. Sometimes it's just one and one. On this specific car, it has one sensor in the front, one sensor in the rear. So this kit's only going to have one rear sensor. And now onto the tools that you're going to need for this DIY. Similar to the front brake job, if you're following along, you're going to need two torque wrenches that can perform different values. This one can do, you know, about 100 foot pounds, uh, 100 newton meters. This one can do up to 41 newton meters. Um, this one's a half inch. We got a three eighths for this. Uh, we got a couple ratchets, uh, same thing, a half inch and a three eighths drive, and then a quarter inch ratchet. This is gonna be used to remove the set screws on the rotors along with a T30. You're gonna have a shallow and a mid 16 millimeter socket. Uh, for the rear calipers, you're going to need a punch. We're using this as an additional punch simply due to the fact that we're missing a smaller size than a quarter inch. But this is a quarter inch punch. You're going to need this to drill out the uh, pin that holds in the rear pads. Again, a hook just to hook our caliper after we remove it. A screwdriver for prying. A hammer for hammering off the rotor. And then a half inch drive impact gun to get the wheel off and a drill with a wire wheel attached. You can use, again, an emery cloth or sandpaper to clean up the hub. I prefer the wire wheel on the drill. It just makes things a little bit quicker. And as always, some brake clean to keep the job clean. And in this case, the rear caliper on this W203 is a dual piston setup. So we're going to use one of these to push in the uh, pistons back into the calipers. And now, on to the job. Thank you for joining me at the car, guys. Now, we're working on the lift today. You can do this job on the lift, on the ground with a jack stand and a floor jack. Whatever you do, just first priority is always make sure the car is secured and it's not gonna fall off and hurt you or hurt somebody else. Uh, to get started, we're gonna remove the wheel. We have five 17 millimeter lug bolts to get out. Bets on how stuck this wheel is? Leave your comments below. Well, if you guessed that it was seized on, good guess. I'm use a little bit of a hammer action to get this wheel off. But before I go any further, I always like to throw the lug bolt back in, just in case the wheel does break off. It doesn't come flying at me or fall on top of me or anything like that. Just loose. Now, on this W203, you have a dual piston caliper in the rear, meaning there's a piston on this side, piston on this side. You have a pin that holds the pads in place that goes across the whole caliper. And the rear right on this vehicle also has the wear sensor. So order of operations is going to be remove wear sensor. We're going to break loose the uh, rotor set screw on here with the T30. And then we're going to work on getting this pin out so that we can remove our pads and then get the rest of the job going. So let's get started with the wear sensor. We can always reshoot this. Okay, so I'm using this little pick just to help get the sensor out of its home. So as you can see, this didn't break. Could you reuse this? Sure, should you? It's so cheap, you might as well save yourself the uh, possible hassle and replace it. Next, we're gonna work on removing our rotor set screw. This calls for a T30. Now, because this is a New England car, you can see it's pretty crusty. I like to take the socket that I'm gonna use and just give it a couple light taps. You're not trying to wreck it, Ralph. It. You're just trying to shock it a little bit, get some of the corrosion loose in case it's seized in, the, seized in there so you don't risk stripping it. However, should you strip it, these are pretty soft. You can drill out the head, get this off, and then remove the stud. And then just give it a quick little, and she's free. Now we're gonna work on removing this uh, pin out that holds the calipers in place. We're gonna start with this quarter inch punch. Basically, you're just gonna That's as far as our punch will get us. 
You can use a smaller one. Unfortunately, we don't have one, so I'm going to change to a different tool. But the goal is to push this all the way through. If these haven't been done in a long time, you want to soak everything with a little uh, bit of penetrant first. Whatever brand you like, just let it soak for a few minutes. It'll make this a lot easier. Careful with that spring. It'll shoot out on you. This is what we got. You can replace these. In this case, we're just going to hit it with the wire wheel, clean it up a little bit, put it back on the car. The spring that just shot out, as you saw, is uh, replaced with the TRW pads. It comes with a new one, so if you lose it, no big deal. The orientation of it is pretty simple. There's no way to mess it up. You have one notch up here for the top part of the clip and a flat base on here for the T portion of the clip, if you will. Now, what we're going to try first before we take this apart is uh, compressing the pistons a bit on each side so that we can just take these pads out and leave the caliper ready for the new ones. You want to keep in mind your fluid level at the reservoir. If uh, the fluid's already high before you even touch the brakes, you're more than likely going to have to remove a little bit from the reservoir. In this case, the fluid was just done recently on this car. The pads are not that wasted, so we're not going to worry about it, but something to keep in mind before you start compressing your pistons back in. Since all these components are coming off, we're just going to take a flathead screwdriver and we're going to pry in between the pad and the rotor since we're not worried about damaging them since they're being thrown out. And we're going to use this to try to compress the pistons a bit before we have to use the tool. be gentle you don't have to gorilla it it doesn't take too much for the pistons to go back that should give us enough room to get started once we get the reassembly going if we need to push the pistons back in more we will these pads just slide right on out before we go any further I'm just going to give everything a quick blast with the brake clean mainly so that when we put our new parts in we're not contaminating them as much uh, be mindful of your sensor here Obviously it's built to see all sorts of weather, but doesn't mean you need to blast it. You can avoid it. Now to get the caliper off, you're gonna take off these two 16 millimeter hex bolts that are holding it onto the hub, the spindle, the knuckle, your choice of words. Now I'm just gonna use the uh, 3 8 ratchet to make quick work of this. Now be mindful, this side has the wear sensor clip so you don't want to overextend that or your brake line. We're just going to go ahead and rest this right on top of the heat shield. There's no real need for the hook. We also don't have any real area to hook it onto, but it'll stay fine right where it is. Now we're going to remove our rear rotor. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a crusty tusty here, so we're going to have to hammer it off. Sometimes they'll just fall off if you're lucky. These cars use a inboard drum type uh, handbrake, parking brake. So you want to make sure, one, that's off before you start all this. Second, sometimes if it's been a long time, the inner pads, the shoes will stick to the hub of the uh, rotor. So that might be something you have to fight. Depends on every vehicle. Every situation is going to be a little different. You can see how crusty this was inside. This owner probably doesn't use the parking brake too much. So it would make sense. Now, before we start any reassembling, we want to clean up this hub a little bit and kind of do some housekeeping so that next time we go to do this brake job, we don't have to fight with the rotor so much. So I'm taking my wire wheel. Again, you can use a wire wheel, sandpaper, emery cloth. All you need to worry about is just cleaning this area up. Now, before I put on the rear rotor, I like to use a little bit of ceramic paste to basically coat this area and where the face of the, the inner face of the rotor is gonna sit on the hub. The idea is that this is gonna help keep the elements out uh, rust from happening so that that way the rotor and the hub don't become one. Now this isn't a Picasso, you don't have to go crazy. A little bit goes a long way. You also want to keep in mind if you put too much, it will sling and you can coat the inside of the parking brake drum area. So you don't want that. Now that we got our hub ready to go, all lathered up, we're going to get our rear rotors on. If you can, try to work clean. You don't want to get your mitts all over this, um, mainly because these are zinc coated. You're not going to take brake clean to them like you would to a traditional rotor that's uncoated. 
So in this case, I just did a quick clean on my gloves before I grabbed them. I'm gonna set it on. Line up my rotor set screw hole. These have a little bit of Loctite on them from the, fa from the, the factory, so you don't have to worry about adding any more. Again, this is a T30. I usually like to snug these up. Uh, there is a torque value for them. It's gonna be, I believe about seven Newton meters, but nice and snug is all you need. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our rear caliper back on. Just be mindful of the line for the wear sensor and your brake hose. You don't wanna kink anything. Make sure everything's running the same way it was. We're just gonna put these 16 millimeter bolts back in, just finger tight. We can line up the hole, there we go. No way, first try, bro? Nope. Oh, yeah. Come on, baby. Again, this is a 16 millimeter bolt. Before I go all the way down, I wanna make sure the bottom one is also happy. We're just gonna snug these in hand tight and then we're gonna go ahead and torque them down. You wanna tighten these two 16 millimeters down to 55 Newton meters. So we're gonna use the wire wheel on the bench. You can use your handheld drill and wire wheel. You can use emery cloth, sandpaper. The goal is just to clean the card off of this a little bit so that it can go in easy. Before we put in the rear pads, it's very important to note the side that has the sensor. The kit comes with these pads that all look similar, but if you look close enough, there's a special notch cut out and a little hole in the pad itself for the wear sensor. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're putting the pad in in the same position that you took it out and you put your sensor back in in the right spot. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to take this all apart again and you're not gonna be a happy camper. I'm gonna go ahead and insert the inner pad first. We're gonna insert the outer pad. And this is the clip I was telling you guys about that comes with the new TRW pads. There's really no way to misinstall these. As you can see, you can't really put it in like this, so. We're just gonna kinda hold it roughly in place here. You're gonna make sure you feed your pin through. Get it through the first pad. You're gonna wanna put some pressure on this while you feed in the pin some more. Now that we have it this far, you can fight it a little bit more. But the goal is to get the pin all the way through. You wanna get it through as much as you can by hand. At this point, I have engagement back into the caliper with the tip of the pin. I'm gonna use a little punch and a hammer to run it all the way through. And we'll show you back here, but you want to make sure that it is flush with the back of the caliper. All right. so we're gonna make sure this pin goes in all the way and sits nice and flush with the back of the caliper. I'm just using a punch and a hammer to push it through. Sure. And you're gonna feel it bottom out. Once you feel it bottom out, if you're unsure if the pin's in the right spot, you can always take a look up front and you can see the tip of the pin show itself through that hole. Now that our pads are in, we can, re we can install our new brake wear pad sensor. This is notched and keyed, so it can really only go in one way. You're not gonna mess it up. That's that. And then again, this has a pin that goes into the pad and your connection that goes into the slot on the pad itself. And you hear a little baby click. Make sure these wires are happy. And that's a wrap on this. And there you have it guys. We got our new rotors on, our new pads on, and our new wear sensor. The process is gonna be identical for the other side, minus the fact that you probably won't have a wear sensor on that. Again, keep in mind some models have two, some models just have one. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our wheel back on, torque the lug bolts to 81 foot-pounds, and that'll wrap up this DIY. 
And there you have it, guys. That concludes our rear brake job on this W203. Again, pretty standard and easy. Basic tools is all you need, something you can do on the ground or on the lift. If you like what you saw, please be sure to drop a like. If you have any questions or comment, leave a comment below. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel.